separate the cable gland into four components by loosening assembly A from assembly B. Assembly A. Reversible cone. Anyway clamping ring. And assembly B. It is not necessary to dismantle the gland any further. If required, cut the shroud to suit the cable diameter, then pass the shroud over the outer sheath. Pass assembly B out the seal nut first, over the cable followed by the anyway clamping ring. The anyway clamping ring cannot be installed incorrectly. If required, an entry thread seal should be fitted over the gland entry threads at this stage. Tighten assembly A into the equipment with a spanner. Determine the conductor length that will be required to suit the equipment geometry. It is recommended that the armour wires are cut with a hacksaw until they are almost severed. Care should be taken not to cut through the wires into the inner sheath. The armour wires can then be twisted and removed easily. Measure and mark the required armour length on the sheath. This will vary depending upon the size of the gland being installed. Armour lengths are shown in the fitting instructions. The outer sheath should be removed to reveal the armour wires at the appropriate length. Open up the armour wires to suit the armour cone. Insert reversible cone. Insert the cable into assembly A, ensuring that the armour is evenly spaced around the cone. Whilst pushing the cable gently forward to maintain contact between the armour and the armour cone, hand tighten the second item on assembly A until a heavy resistance is achieved, then tighten a further full turn with a spanner. Pass the anyway clamping ring and subassembly B up the cable. Hold the main item on subassembly A with a spanner and tighten the body of subassembly B until metal to metal contact is made. Use a spanner to loosen assembly B from assembly A. Once disconnected, it should be possible to see that the armour is securely clamped between the anyway clamping ring and the armour cone. Hand tighten assembly B into assembly A. Using a spanner to hold the entry component of assembly A, tighten the body of assembly B until metal to metal contact is made. Finally tighten the outer seal housing with a spanner until the seal has clearly formed around the cable and cannot be further tightened without the use of excessive force or until the outer seal nut and body are metal to metal. The body should be secured with a spanner during tightening. If required, pass the shroud up the cable and position around the gland.